So the psalmist is showing us on today that there is deliverance in the word of God. You're asking God to order your steps. He's ordered it. You've been in it for a while. Now he said, because you've been in this for a while, your deliverance is going to come to you. Oh, yes, you're going to have a Job season. You're going to feel down and going to be a little broken. But on the same note, God is in the midst of that. It's a new beginning for you. It's a new life. New beginning, new life, and it's a new day. Welcome. I am your TV host, Augustina Frazier, and I am so delighted on today to come forth with this new broadcast called A Time of Empowerment and Inspiration. I can't believe God has opened such a door for me that is so bubbling on the inside that I can bring forth the Word of God to you and that you are allowing me to come into your home, in your car, in your studio, on the internet, just to hear a Word of God. Again, I am delighted on today. Time is of the essence, so I'm going to get into the Word. Today, I'm going to be talking about extrication. God dealt with me in December. The first sermon is going to be about extrication. I'm going to be taking the sermon from Deuteronomy chapter 15 and Deuteronomy chapter 28. As a matter of fact, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 14. Let's talk about what extricate means. Extricate means a mixture of prefix. EX means out or out of. And the Latin word of trish, which means hindrance. So the Lord was showing me this is a season of extrication. Many people are going to come out of things that's been hindering them from their walk with him, hindering them from their businesses, hindering them from their marriages, from their relationship. God said it's a season of extrication. But remember, it is not always easy when you're dealing with extrication. Let me give you an example. I'm trying to extricate myself from a loved one who passed away. It could be a parent, it could be a child, a sibling. I'm trying to extricate myself from this who passed away, but death has a grip on me, meaning it is not simply easy just to let go of something. So my question to you today, what are you trying to execute from? What are you trying to move forward in and this is in your life? What is God saying to you and that you have not let go of something? So we're gonna talk about this today and we're gonna believe God that this is the season that you're gonna be able to break away from some things, get rid of some things, and make a, a, another decision to go in a different direction. We want to be in God's will, and that's the most important thing. So again, I'm gonna ask you this question on today. What are you trying to execute in order to move forward in God and in life? It's very hard. I, I shouldn't say it's very hard. It could be overwhelming. But the Bible said there is nothing too hard for God. Let's look at some synonyms for the word of extricate. Extricate means to be clear from something, disembarrass of something, disengage of something, disentangle from something, free from something. I'm going to pause there. Everybody wants to be free. The Bible says who the son make free is free indeed. Extrication brings freedom. And that is what God is saying on today. He wants you to be free. So many people reach out to me in my line of practice that they're strung out on drugs, they're strung out on alcohol, they have anger inside of them, they have dissatisfaction inside of them, they don't have peace, they're looking for love. There's so much hurt and pain in people's life. They want to be extricated from it. And that is what this broadcast is about, is to teach you how to move forward in spite of what you're going through and be empowered through the Holy Spirit and inspired through his word. Let's move forward. Extricate also means to be disentangled, free as we said it. Liberty, release. I'm gonna pause there all by itself. Who wants to be released from something? If someone is in, in prison, their biggest desire is to be released from something. But I can tell you, if we would talk to someone that's in the system, an inmate, they would tell you it is not that easy. It's a process that you have to go through. Another uh, example is, um, I want to talk about, let's pause, disembarrass. 
disembarrass me to free oneself of a burden or to make something or something free from embarrassment. I'm going to pause there. A lot of times when people make mistakes, whether it's by conversation, whether by a physical contact, whether it's by a, a, a business deal, whatever it may be, they become embarrassed. Embarrassment is confinement. Confinement takes you into uh, depression or a deep sadness. It also causes you to do a blame game. I wish I had made better decisions. I wish I hadn't gone down that road. I wish I hadn't made that connection to that person. I wish, I wish. Wishing is not a problem, but you got to put it to action. And that is why I'm here today to talk about extrication. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. When I look at the word embarrassment, I look at embarrassment as a preventative. It's a preventative to teach you that that, that decision that you made, that you won't make it anymore. It's also an intervention, an intervention to prevent you from making that decision again. I'm going to move along. Let's look at the word disentangle. Disentangle means to loosen, to detach, or to disconnect. I'm going to pause again. To detach from something. That is the hardest thing to do. People don't realize to, you just can't break away from something because you have bonds that go with anything that you make a commitment to, whether it's a good commitment or whether it's not a good commitment. When you detach yourself to something, just think about it. You apply your total person to that person or to that situation. That means you attach yourself body, soul, mind, and spirit. Oh my God, I thank you, Jesus. Body, soul, mind, and spirit. Let's look at the body. It's a physical connection that you make, whether it's a commitment to a mortgage company, whether it's commitment to a person, whether it's commitment to the bank account or an investment. You give your body to that. That means you act it out. You pursued it. Let's look at the spirit. The spirit is how you're feeling about the decision that you're making. Sometimes your five senses come forth and it tells you this is not a good thing, but you are already giving your body so your body remind, uh, reflects in your mind. A mind tells you there's a feeling there and you react to the emotion. So it involves your spirit. Let's look at the soul. The soul is dealing with your intellect, your emotions, your thought process, how you feel. That all is involved. So when you're thinking about detaching yourself from something, I want to tell you it is not easy to separate yourself from anything. It takes a process of letting go. It's also a good thing to learn more about yourself. When you are detached to something, you learn more about yourself. Let's give an example. Augustina attached herself to her career or Augustina attached herself to her school. Let's look at that. When I attached, my, attached myself to the school, I had to give my body, I had to give my emotions, I had to give my thought process, I had to give my commitment. I had to even give my energy, meaning my spirit over to it in order to be on one accord, in order to tune in to what I'm there for or tune in and what I'm supposed to be doing. So let's talk a little more about that. Detach means to separate from, I got a question mark. I want you to do, say this to yourself while you're driving in your car listening, while you're looking at the television, while you're on the internet listening during lunchtime. What do you need to separate yourself from what? I want you to send me some emails. At the end, you're going to see the email where you can send the information. But I want you to think about what do I need to detach myself from? Sometimes it's an individual. Sometimes it's hatred. Sometimes it's bitterness. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's doubt. Sometimes it's fear. What have you allowed to get in your spirit that caused you to be fear? I'm talking about extrication today. What have you allowed to get into your heart that made a distance, that distanced you from God? What has troubled you so much that you have questioned yourself, is this God anymore? What have you put in your spirit? What have you allowed to go into your heart that you're questioning your footsteps? The Bible said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Today, that's what I want to emphasize. God wants to order your steps. He wants to do extrication and things that should not be there so that you can see a closer, see the path a little more and that your walk is closer to God. Let's go a little further. 
release. Release means to allow or to enable you to escape from being confined. Wow, that's saying something all by itself. No one wants to be confined to something. Confinement means stronghold. Confinement also means isolation. I hear in my spirit that some people say, I feel isolated. Why do you feel isolated today? Why do you feel that God can't get you out of the situation? Why do you feel this way? What did you allow to come into your heart? Or what person did you allow to come into your spirit that told you that you can't make it? That told you that you're nothing? That told you that you can't do anything? And the Bible said that we can do all things through Christ that strengthen us. Hallelujah. I love the word of God because it says, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Remember that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. I don't care what the situation is. God showed me today in prayer that prayer that his name has power. When is the last time you said Jesus? When is the last that you, time that you called on the name of Jesus? There's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. When have you said, Lord, help me in the mighty name of Jesus? When is the, when's the last time you said, Lord, help me out of this situation in the mighty name of Jesus? He said, there's no other name that has power but the name of Jesus. So we're talking about extrication today. God wants to relieve you of that heavy burden that you're carrying. God wants to relieve you of that suicide intention that you're carrying. God wants to relieve you of the doubt that you have in your heart. God said he is not the author of confusion, but he gives you peace. The Bible said if you keep your mind on Jesus, he will keep you in perfect peace. So we're talking about confinement. Confinement also um, cause you to not flow freely. You want to have liberty. When you make decisions and choices, you want to feel the liberty. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, you want to feel the liberty of the Holy Spirit as the Lord comes down on you. I feel heaven opening up to me. It also means, uh, release means to bring deliverance. Hallelujah. Many people are crying out for deliverance. And God said he would deliver you on today. But you have to trust him. You have to believe in him. In that situation that you're embarrassed about, God said there's nothing too hard for you. You're taking something that God has taken control of. I think a lot of times when we deal with the body, soul, and mind, spirit, we don't know how to let go of things emotionally. When you have asking God for forgiveness of something, you have to know that God has forgiven you and that he's saying, now I release back into your life peace that passeth all understanding. Let's go a little further. I want to look at Deuteronomy chapter 15. This is where uh, extrication is coming from. Actually, it's coming from verse 12. Let's move down to verse 12. I'm going to go a little backwards. I'm going to start off with Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 12, then go to verse 9, and then go up to 1. Verse 12 is talking like this. And if thy brethren are a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman, be sold unto thee and serve their six years, then in the seventh year thou should let him go free from thee. From thee. It's saying here that if your brethren, here the uh, people of God, was going through a season of enslavement. Hallelujah. That was a part of the culture at that time. And God was saying to them that after you have completed your seventh year, and it consists of anything that you have done within those six years leading up to seven years, he would grant you a, a deliverance, a release a release from everything, a release from debt, a release from strongholds, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus. Actually, it's the year of release that he was saying here. So let me go back down to 12. This scripture, this verse of scripture is relating to being enslaved. We're talking about extrication today. This is talking about here where people were enslaved under oppression. They were being oppressed by the oppressor. I'm going to look at some synonyms and talk about what an oppressor is. Someone that persecutes. Someone that bullies. Someone that make you a slave driver. Something that torments you. Something that tortures you. Someone that is a manipulator. Intimidator. In the mighty name of Jesus. And there's many more. Let's talk about being bullied. It is a common practice that I hear with the youth. That they're getting bullied in the school. 
That's an oppressor spirit. How do you deal with bullying? It's not being physical. It's not cussing nobody else, but it's leaning on the name of Jesus and trusting God in his word and trusting that he's able to bring you out um, being bullied. I want to look at the word being tortured and tormented. A lot of times when people don't forgive themselves or forgive a person, they are being emotionally tormented till it start affecting the mind. Hallelujah. Or it tortures you, meaning it takes away your sleep. It messes with your conscience. It goes into a rage of hatred. It goes into a rage of bitterness. It even slips into depression. I want to challenge you today to allow God to extricate you from that hurt that you have. I'm not saying what you went through is not uh, an easy thing, but I'm saying to you that God's saying today, there is nothing too hard for him. And he wants to deliver you. He wants to set you free. For whom the son set free is free indeed. I want to look at this. It says in Proverbs 3 and 31, Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways or her way. Meaning, just, be just because somebody did something to you, and yes, it hurt. You should go through the dialogue of being hurt. But I need you to know that you shouldn't take on the disposition that they have and begin to be transparent in your relationship to other or situation. Because a, a person that's hurting normally hurts someone else. And I want to empower you on today. Let God help you through that pain. Let God lift a heavy burden. Let God take you through a deliverance process that you can come here like I am and share, share with people your testimony. Look what the Lord has done. Another enslaved uh, mentality or synonym is stronghold. Strong mean, stronghold means someone that dominates you or something dominates you. Second Corinthians verse, chapter 10 verse 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God pulling down a stronghold. I want you to believe God on today that the weapons that you have, not the physical, not the verbal uh, uh, warf, uh, uh, language that you use, but they're mighty, mighty in pulling down the strongholds of God, meaning his word is, uh, is your warfare. Your word of God is your sword. I want you to know that all you have to do is say in the name of Jesus and every stronghold in your life, God will break it down. He said it's mighty and pulling down the strongholds. God can do anything but fail. I'm going to move on down to Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 9. It says, Beware that there be not a thought in the wicked heart, saying the seventh year, the year of release, is at hand. And I be evil against thy poor brethren, and thou givest him not. And he cried out to, to the Lord against thee, and it, and it be sin unto thee. Deuteronomy verses 9 through 10 is telling you to beware. It's telling you to beware, hallelujah, when God is delivering someone. I'm just going to bring it up to 2019. When you see somebody being free from something, even if they have hurt you, beware. Don't allow your anger and hatred or bitterness um, isolate you to the point that you cannot let go and you see your brother and sister have asking God for forgiveness but you're still holding on to that stronghold of pain of what you went through. Don't allow that to suppress you. Don't allow that to suppress you. Suppress me to force to be put to an end to something, to prevent you from development, to, to uh, prevent you from, um, not prevent, but prevent you from developing or constrain you. Listen, I want you to forgive the person that hurt you. I want you to forgive, uh, the company that lets you go. I want you to forgive uh, the person that may have even hurt your child. I want you to forgive the mortgage company that did you wrong. I want you to be free on today. I'm speaking extrication right now. I'm pleading the blood of Jesus. Oh, I go cut Sunday. I'm pleading the blood of Jesus because I'm believing as I'm speaking into this, this uh, camera here that everybody under the sound of my breath is going to be delivered on today. I'm believing that those that are suppressed or being oppressed by the oppressor is going to, receive, going to receive the deliverance through the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm believing that God is going to set you free on today. It says here that uh, verse, 
verse 15 and verse, um, I'm sorry, chapter 15 and verse 9. It, it re goes to Proverbs 23, verse 6. It says, Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. Meaning, don't be grudging, grudgingly to see this person being delivered or being relieved from something that they did. See, I found out the hardest thing is that when we have um, hurt one another or somebody have hurt you or vice versa, I done been there and done that. It is hard to see that person move on with their life. Don't you know that person has a heart just like you? They may have possibly asked God for forgiveness, went through a deliverance of um, forgiveness, and God had seen that their heart was right and he lifted the burden off of them. But you're still holding on today and I wanna minister to you today. Let that go. The Bible says here, in Proverbs 23 and 6 is saying to you, thou grudge to relieve him. That means you refuse to let go of things. You have to let go. I know you went through a divorce. I know the person hurt you. But God's saying today, let that bitterness go. Let that pain go. It's time to be extricated, meaning it's time to be delivered from this. It's time to let go and trust God on what he's saying to you. Do you know you're studying your development? Do you know you're, dis, you're, you're studying the next move in your life that God has for you? Do you know that God has greater work for you? Do you know that same pain that, he, that you have in your life, he wants you to take it and, and share it with others? But you gotta get through the, the emotional part because you're gonna have the memory of it, which is gonna be powerful to you for you to share. But you gotta let go of the pain. You got to let go of it. Let God help you with that. Proverbs 22, uh, 22 verse 9, it says, it reads, He that have a bountiful, bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he giveth of his bro the bread to the poor. Meaning, you don't give grudgingly. You give with love. You give with, um, uh, with joy. You enjoy what you're doing. And this is where God wants to get you back. He wants you to find your way back to him. Yes, you're serving him. Yes, you're reading the Bible. You even serve in the church. You're serving in community. You're helping in uh, nursing homes. You're helping everywhere. I believe some of you are helping in the prison system where there's so much pain. But God said he sees your heart and he sees that you're still holding on things that you need to let go. I need you to let go of it today. I'm going to go up to verse 1 in Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 1. It reads, at the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release. This is what God is saying. I don't know if it's seven years, seven months, seven seconds, seven weeks, seven um, minutes. I don't know what it is. But God said, I'm granting you a release. Hallelujah. I'm granting you a release on today. You've been praying to God and saying, I just want this out of my life. I don't want to be in pain no more. I don't want this drug addiction. I don't want this alcohol uh, desire anymore. I don't want even sexual per, uh, perversion anymore. You've been saying to God, I want to be released. So I'm coming on here today, not knowing that you're listening to this broadcast and that God said to me to read this to you. At the end of every seven years, thou will make a release, meaning you don't have to be enslaved to it any anymore. I know this, uh, uh, this chapter speaks in general uh, years ago, but I'm bringing it up to 2019. You don't have to be enslaved anymore. I know that you were bought out and you were um, put into a situation that you were made to be enslaved, but God said, this is your season. This is your year to be released. And today, it starts today. You're at the seventh, uh, seventh period, seven week, whatever, seven equals to you. He said, I'm granting you a release on today. When this, it says here, uh, let's look at this a little more, that the release is re reflecting um, from Exodus 23, verse 11. I got so many notes here and I'm trying to cram it in here because I want to bless your soul on today. But this, this uh, release is, re is referring to the Sabbath year that was spoken out of the book of Exodus 23, verse 11, when Moses was being dealt with by God. This is where God was uh, putting in stone the Sabbath law so that Moses could get the people ready 
that they were being they were being extricated. We can go all the way back to Exodus 12 when they were being delivered out of Egypt. And I don't want you to go back to Egypt, the Lord said. He said, you've been in Egypt too long and then I came in there and you anointed your doorposts. You follow the instruction of your pastor. You follow the instruction of your parents, whoever told you to anoint yourself or anoint your home. And God granted you a release. God said he don't want you to return back to Egypt, meaning bad habits or the same mindset. He wants you to know that he has granted you a release for you to move on forward in life. I know that you don't have much clothes. I know that you don't have much money. You may not even have transportation, but trust the Lord because he's going to make it all right for you. He is going to make it all right for you. Listen, when God was talking to the people of God through Moses in Exodus 23, there's a word that stuck out to me that God was dealing with Moses on. He said, I don't want you to become molar. I didn't want the Hebrews to become molar or the Jewish people at that time to become in a molar um, position. Molar means slowly decay, especially because of being neglected. And I know that you've been feeling neglected, but God said he's been seeing everything and he don't want you to decay. That's why he said, hear what the spirit is saying to you today on this broadcast, that he has granted you a release. This is a year of release for you. This is a sabbatical year, meaning you've been going through so much. He's going to let you rest and have peace. He is going to bless you with the desires of your heart because of your obedience. I'm here in Joseph's season. Joseph went through so much, but he made it through it. And so God said, please read Joseph in the book of um, Genesis. Read all that Joseph went through. He made it and he was made fit for a king. Now listen, I need you to tune in every week, every Friday at 1.30 and listen to this broadcast, a time of empowerment and inspiration. We're gonna, I'm gonna be teaching and preaching for a while, but th down there's gonna be series where I'm gonna have guest people on here where we're gonna dialogue about the goodness of God. And then I'm also gonna bring other people on here or other guests that's gonna deal with the total person. That's what this ministry is about, the total person, dealing with the body, soul, mind, and spirit. Because I want you to have a healthy body, I want you to have a healthy mind, I want you to have a healthy conscience. So today, I want you to read these scriptures. Read Deuteronomy chapter 15 and read Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 14. And on next week, I'm going to pick up a little more and talk a little more about this and conclude with Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 14. I thank you and I love you with the love of God. Father, we close this, uh, this broadcast out with the power and the anointing from heaven. I ask that you rain down on every individual that's listening. Allow your anointing to destroy every yoke and set the captive free. I ask that you would grant them the desires of their heart according to your will. We bless you and we see you on next week. A time of empowerment and inspiration with Dr. Augustine and Frazier. God bless.